Hey, good morning, Columbia Glider Dave here. Uh, so the exhaust is done. It was done yesterday, but I didn't feel like crawling under the truck to show you the work. The fella's name who did this uh, for me uh, is a uh, mobile service out of Joplin, Missouri. He used to be an, an employee of Four State, and they allow him to work out of their parking lot. Um, costed, uh, oh, his, his name is uh, Seth Ogdell. I think the spelling is O-G-D-L-E. Uh, his phone number is 417-499-7591. Uh, he can do just about anything. Uh, brakes, uh, you name it. Uh, air horns. I was looking at doing the air horn. And to do a train horn and do it proper, that's that's looking like an investment. That's something I, I don't want to do right now. I don't want to spend uh, $800, $1,000 to put a train horn in. Because uh, to plumb that, you're going to need, uh, I think you said three-quarter inch airline or something, or half inch. Forget the, the, the diameter of the air, airline that's needed to, to push enough air to make those horns sound good. But it also involves uh, installing uh, a valve that's uh, separate than the one that you have up here. Uh, this one here is very tiny. I forget the diameters and stuff, but this does not uh, flow enough air to make uh, those train horns sound proper. Uh, so, didn't do that. And then I've got a uh, Meritor transmission. So all those uh, fancy knobs and extenders and, and different things that they have are meant for Eaton Fullers. Eaton Fullers run air to the splitter up on the... Uh, on the knob and the Eaton Fuller is electric so it sends an electric signal to the splitter down to the transmission so they don't have uh, knob kits uh, shifter knob kits uh, over there for a Meritor and it probably would have gotten involved again uh, you know who wants to spend $500 some ridiculous amount of money so, so you have a, a special knob on your shifter not me. Uh, so that's two grand, probably, that I didn't want to spend. Uh, maybe at some point when the truck's paid off, I'll look into it. Uh, who knows? Maybe I get rid of the truck before that even uh, gets done. But so I'm gonna crawl under the truck. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, what he did. This man's uh, hourly rate is seventy-five dollars an hour. So the labor wasn't horrible. Because when you do something outside of the box, uh, I mean, there's no there's no kit to do a, uh, a what's called a weed burner, uh, you know, an exhaust that's running under the cab. So it took probably just an hour, hour and a half, just to looking at it, buying parts, returning parts, uh, before we finally settled in on the way this was going to run. I was trying to avoid 90 degree angles, but ultimately, uh, when we got towards the tail end of it. Uh, couldn't figure out how to make 45s work um, to get around the transmission and get the uh, the pipe down in between the frame uh, past past the transmission. So I've got two 90s in there, and I settled in on a uh, a very short galvanized steel uh, performance muffler. This thing sounds awesome um, when you're going down a road. I mean, the Jake brake is not terribly loud you know it is muffled but it's not stock quiet either and when you go through the uh the gears uh and you get the rpms up to 1500 rpm it's got it's got a hum it's got a satisfying hum in the cab i mean it sounds nice uh so i like it it costed uh hair under a thousand dollars to do between the labor labor was like 320 um and I added one little piece of chrome, a uh, little flare on the end. Uh, gotta have a little chrome, right? I didn't wanna spend a ridiculous amount of money uh, to replace everything and make the whole the whole pipe uh, chrome. So let's get under there, show you what, uh, what we did. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is the stack is gone. I'm gonna have to get a wash here. This is uh, what was uh, done with the exhaust and the, uh, the muffler was cracked open. Let's get under here and see what we got going on. The first thing you 
you'll see is uh, that's the stock pipe there. This right here. Well, the stock pipe hooks to the turbo. Runs uh, the original uh, flex pipe there. That's a uh, the stainless uh, flex pipe that I got from them. You see all the new cabs, uh, clamps, and it's uh, still hooked up to the original hangers. What we had to do though is to get under the cab. This pipe here had to be shortened, so he, he, he pulled it out and cut it. This pipe here actually ran back to here before it curved and went up the stack. So it was cut uh, a foot or two, and then we got our first uh, 90 degree bend down here, the second 90 degree bend down here. Another stainless flex pipe. And then that's the muffler here. And we found a, a bolt off the battery box that he can mount that clamp and put a, uh, the original uh, clamp that was on the, uh, the bigger muffler. I had to cut it down the band. Hold the muffler there, and this is it. I mean, this is. I don't know if we can see how big that muffler is. That's the muffler. That's the whole muffler. Uh, it's a uh, performance muffler. And then we finished with that. Uh, this is about the only piece of chrome I wanted on there. Was a tail. This was a. Uh, pipe section for a Peterbilt. I thought it made uh, for a great little tip. And we angled that uh, little tip towards the, uh, the center of the truck, downwards. Uh, I didn't want it spraying on the brakes. I mean, it's spraying at the first pumpkin a little bit. I can't imagine going down the road that's going to heat the pumpkin too, too much, but we'll keep an eye on that. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll aim it somewhere else. But that's it, man. It flows nice. Runs nice, sounds nice. Uh, somewhere under a thousand bucks. I think it was like nine, nine forty, something like that, between the labor and parts. Now that could have gone up uh, another four or five hundred dollars had I tried to chrome the whole thing. But why waste that kind of money, right? I just wanted to get the uh, the stack off the truck. I don't like the way that looks. Uh, now the downside to doing something like this is, if, if I have a leak and I go to Freightliner, I don't know if they have those those elbows and parts. I'm sure they can get them. Uh, I think the weakest part here is the uh, flex, the flex pipe in the two locations. Everything's mounted securely, so the flex pipes shouldn't be a, a problem. And that long piece is a, a stock piece that's under the cab, so if that were to corrode and go again, I. I I'm assuming if I went to a freight liner or somewhere else, they'd be able to get that and just cut it like this man did. It's not rocket science. It's just work I don't want to do. So that's it, man. Uh, there's no point in letting you hear what it sounds like because I tried listening to it on the uh, on a video that I did, and you really can't tell the difference. But going down the road, man, it sounds nice. So that's that. I'm going to include some pictures of the... Uh, the framing and support for the belly boxes with this video that's kind of a sneak peek of what that's looking like all right take care